You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 83. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious time with me. You know, episode 83. So 83 times I've had to say you're listening to The Intelligent Vocalist podcast. And I've realized that intelligent vocalist is kind of hard to say. Like it's one of those things, if you say The Intelligent Vocalist 10 times really fast, uh, you'll get a little tongue-tied. And it makes me feel a little better about the fact that very often when I tell you you're listening to the Intelligent Vocalist podcast, I end up having to do it three or four times. And I think, what the heck is wrong with me? And uh, having had to read my audio book, that, oh my gosh, my next book, I'm really going to be careful about the sentences I write because um, you write things and then you go to read them out loud and I'm just tripping all over the place. But... My audiobook is now available. If you go to Amazon.com and look for Teaching Contemporary Singing, I will read to you. It is read by me. And uh, what's cool is if you sign up for Audible, you can actually get the book for free. And uh, if you get my book for free and then quit, I'm not going to tell Amazon. But uh, yeah, you can get my book for free. So you can, I can read to you and teach you all about how to teach singing. Hey, um, I'm going to be a good podcaster today. I want to tell you about uh, this really great vocal masterclass I'm going to be teaching at. And this is the Osborne Head and Neck Institute. Uh, they do this vocal masterclass. It's for an amazing cause uh, where they bring elite head and neck uh, surgery services to um, people all over the world and communities that don't get to see this level of health care. Um, I know they just got back from a, a trip in Peru uh, where they were helping people there. They also help people in the U.S. It's just an amazing foundation. So this is all for charity. But if you are going to be in Los Angeles, uh June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, there is just three days of an amazing training uh, for voice teachers. And on Saturday, the 22nd, that's open to the general public. Um, You can, well, general public's not going to want to go to this. I mean, singers and voice actors, but they're, you know, they're going to cover such things as um, the singer's guide to the actor's voice, finding your artistic identity, getting over stage fright. I mean, it's just a, a whole panel of these great vocal experts. And I will be presenting on Friday, June 21st. I'm going to be talking about uh, voice and acoustic science. And I'm going to also be teaching how to teach high belt. Uh, So if you really want to learn how to make those real high, intense, belty sounds without hurting yourself, well, that's going to be my class. Uh, But yeah, they're going to go over how to do scream safely. I mean, this is is just an amazing lineup of uh, of voice teachers, so I'm I'm honored to be there. Uh, So yeah, it is going to be June 21st, 22nd, 23rd. I will put the link on the show notes. If you go to johnhandy.com forward slash 83, you will have the link there. I will also go ahead and link my audio book. So there endeth the commercials. Um, What I want to talk to you about today is placement. You know, there are certain ideas in the voice that I have always found not necessarily confusing, but they're just terms almost in search of a meaning. Um, And one is support. Support is... It has definitions that vary sometimes from teacher to teacher and ideas of support. And then there is placement. And and placement, I I find, can really confuse uh, singers. Well, can confuse teachers as well. Um, uh, Well, the teachers usually know what they mean by it, but I I find singers get really confused by it. And I I sometimes see, and I'm going to break my rules here, because I, I don't like to to talk down about other uh, teaching that I've seen. So I'm, I'm going to preface it by saying that 
I didn't get to see the whole lesson and maybe things were explained a little better, uh, but I was just popping around YouTube the other day and uh, watching some voice lessons and seeing some really good stuff. And then um, I'm seeing where the, the teacher will tell the student, hey, you need more chest voice. Uh, you're a little too much in your head. Can you bring that forward? But then the mechanics of how to do that aren't explained. They're just told to somehow find the lever that brings the voice back or brings the voice forward or makes it brighter. And some singers admittedly respond well to these instructions. And perhaps that was what was going on. Um, I was just jumping around. But I, I remember um, when I started lessons with this very, very famous uh, drum teacher who's since passed away. Uh, by the name of Freddie Gruber. And Freddie was teaching all of these drum lessons. And uh, the, the drummer of Rush, Neil Peart, I think that's how you say his name, Peart, Pert. Anyway, the guy from Rush uh, took a year off of his career to study with Freddie. Uh, that's how legendary Freddie was. So I go in, I'm 19 years old, 18, and I'm going into this legendary drum teacher's house. And Freddie was just w one heck of a character. But I had uh, previously been studying with a very famous drummer uh, who still today is, is renowned as, as one of the great drummers. And now he's a uh, clinician, but he's just phenomenal. But when I studied with him, he would just tell me things like, oh, clean that up, or um, let's see if you can play that more steady. And, and so I was saying to, to Freddie, you know, well, he would tell me to clean it up. And Freddie said, hey, man, how are you supposed to do that? What do you do? You just take some magic pixie dust and sprinkle it on your hands, man? How are you supposed to do it, man? That's what you need to be taught. And he was right. It's, it's not enough to just say, clean that up, make it smoother. Play it faster, bring it forward, bring it back, have less chest voice. What are the mechanics of that? So I want to talk to you about the mechanics of placement, what that is, what play, how I think of, of placement, since it's my show, I'm going to give you my interpretation of placement, and then you can adjust accordingly. Um, here's the bottom line. Your voice doesn't go more forward or more back. Your voice doesn't go from your chest to your head. Your voice doesn't change direction. When your vocal folds, which sit at the, the bottom of the Adam's apple, basically there, and they buzz like a trumpet player's lips, when they close over, compress air, and then pop back open, they create puffs of vibrating air. And those puffs of vibrating air take the same pathway no matter what you are singing. They travel from the throat to the mouth, a little bit spills into the nose, and out past the lips to the listener's ear. The key is how they are vibrating, what parts of the sound wave are vibrating. And as you, as you begin to change and you change brightness, darkness, vowels, uh, pitch, all of these things, the sound waves vibrate a little differently as they take their same path. And as they take their same path, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify that a little bit for uh, the more science-minded. When, when you are singing a bit more optimally, the energies will actually, ref they'll kind of turn back on themselves a bit and reflect down to the vocal cords, and that helps you sing a little bit better. So it's a little more complicated than that, but they're basically going the same way. They're certainly not going up into your head. Um, and people will say, wow, I feel my head voice. It's, it's up behind my eyes. And it's like, yeah, but the sound's not there because I'd like to think that space is being occupied by your brain. Um, but what happens is as these energies change, as, as different parts of the sound wave become excited by the resonators and the interactions, we experience that in different ways, and it changes the sensations we experience as a singer, and that's the key. There is what is actually happening in the voice, and then there's what we experience as a singer, and that can be very misleading. Um, it can, it's brought up all kinds of crazy ideas about the voice, and from um, the, the sound waves then splitting and going in different directions and behind the soft palate to, on certain notes. And it's not. It's the sensations thereof. 
And what placement is, is placement is a sensation that you experience as a singer. All right? You may feel, if I have you say, ooh, uh, you will likely, although I don't dictate uh, sensations to singers, but you will likely feel ooh, sit a little further back in terms of what you're experiencing uh, with the resonance, with the vibrations. And as you go to ah, that may feel more forward and out the mouth, all right? And what is happening is you are changing the size and shape of the resonators. As the sound wave is fed through these resonators, it is like an EQ system. The ooh is like the DJ, so you have the, the uh, I would say CD, but these days it's an MP3 file, something coming from the computer, although some old school may use a turntable. Let's say it's a turntable. Let's go really old school. So you have a physical record. You have information on the record of the song, and the information is the same on all the records of that song. So the information is then fed into the DJ's rig, but the DJ can take this filter and turn it all the way down so that the sound goes and you're just getting this this muffled bass and then the dj can open up the filter and start cranking the highs and it creates this new experience and it makes the song more exciting and it builds and that's what good djs do um I am not of the opinion uh, that a, a skilled DJ is not a musician. I, I think uh, DJing is actually a marvelous creative skill where you're essentially uh, reproducing and remixing music right on the fly, depending on, on the energy of the audience. Not, not the people who fake it and just twiddle knobs with, with the computer where everything's already been pre-done. But, uh, although if they did the work beforehand, yeah, there's skill in that. But anyway, as usual, I digress. But getting back to that, that filter, but no matter what you do with the filter, the information on the record is the same. The information being sent by the record through the rig remains the same. The information being sent from your vocal folds is the same, but I'm going to use my filter to filter out the bright ah quality when I say ooh, and then I'm going to add back in like the DJ cranking up the filter ooh, to bring in the brightness. And what that does when I change that filter is it changes the sensation of the voice. So I feel it in different ways. We're all wired a little bit differently. Uh, those who have a more acute kinesthetic awareness Wow, two fancy words in a row, acute kinesthetic. That mind-body awareness um, will, they'll feel a little more intensely. They just may have a greater awareness of it. And, and that, that ability is, is pretty good for singing. But if you don't have it, uh, it's okay. You can work through it. Um, but it is helpful to have that, that good mind-body awareness. As you change that, you will tend to feel the note come a little more forward. As you go higher, because the dominant uh, resonance shifts from, um, and, and to really simplify it, from a little more energy boost in the throat to a little more energy boost in the mouth uh, as, you're, as you're kind of belting and, and singing, contemporary singing, you're going to feel this lift. It's going to, the sensations are going to change. And we equate those sensations with placement. And people get quite good at mapping where they feel certain things, uh, depending on pitch, intensity, vowel, etc. And that creates a correct expectation. And correct expectations are extremely valuable. Um, I describe learning to sing as in the beginning, it's like going down a flight of stairs in the dark. And when you go for a higher note, as you step down and you do, you're not sure if there's another stair or if there's a landing, um, you can be in a bit of trouble if you think there's a landing and there's more stairs. Uh, you have an incorrect anticipation. And when you're first learning to sing, you're getting your voice together, your anticipations, your expectations are not dialed in. And getting control of your voice is like turning on the light. And now you see whether there's a stair or a landing, and then your balance adjusts accordingly in that moment before you take the step. 
So your balance is able to adjust in that microsecond before you sing the notes. I was going to say hit the note, but since we voice teachers like to argue about everything, people will argue about saying the, the word hit because that denotes that you're using tension and you're slamming and... Yeah, we, we semantics. You know, again, it's talking about singing. As Frank Zappa said, it's like dancing about architecture. It's it's kind of hard, but anyway. So you want to create and map out these these different anticipations, and and the sensation that you're going to feel is a big part of it because that's how we have to guide this good ship singer. Um, you you have to be able to utilize sensation because we don't have conscious control of these muscles, as I've talked about before. Uh, that's what keeps voice teachers in business. As you as you create this map of these sensations, you become you have more awareness of placement. But placement in and of itself is is a result. It's not a cause. When somebody tells you to move your voice forward, move your voice back, let it sit higher, let it sit lower, what is the mechanism to make that happen? If you don't have control of the mechanism for that, then you're just guessing. And that's sometimes when I've, I've seen uh, teachers do that, it might, I, I just want to scream, but what's the tool? What's the mechanism? What do they control? And to really simplify it, I view the singer as controlling Air, chord, and vowel, or resonance. Those three things, air, chord, vowel. I say it all the time, ACV, ACV. That's one of my little uh, triangles, part of the, the, the teaching triangle that I have in my book, Teaching Contemporary Singing, audio book available on Amazon.com and Audible, soon to be iTunes, but commercials are over. And um, so that air, chord, vowel, those are your mechanisms. I, I will tell students, you know, placement is kind of like you're driving your car and the placement is, you know, you want to go to that store you see over on the corner. Yeah. But you don't take your hands off the wheel and your foot off the gas and just stare at the store and think about going there. How do you get there? You get there by controlling the steering wheel, the gas and the brake. You get there by controlling your air, your cord and your valve. And then the placement is a result. So if, if you're just thinking about placement without having the tools in place, I think you're going to do some, some wheel spinning and it's going to be less and less effective for you. So here's how I want you to think of it. I, I want you to work on your voice and get control of what you actually do control right? The, the, the flow of air to the vocal folds. Then the vocal folds, their job is to adjust for pitch and then to hold back a certain amount of air depending on the intensity so that it becomes compressed and turned into a sound wave. And then your vowel is the shaping of your resonators at which time you become a passive vessel. You just now have to allow this energy to interact with your throat and mouth resonators that to then be passed on to the world. And however you feel that, when you control those to get the desired result, whatever that sensation is, that's your placement. That becomes your guidepost. And ultimately, then these sensations are cataloged and your awareness of them is strengthened so that when you go to do this note again, you know if you're there, right? Then sensation becomes something that's valuable. Uh, placement becomes something that's valuable. If you're chasing placement too soon, if you think that that's what you control, uh, you're chasing your tail a little bit. So get control of those tools. Hey, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you want more information about me, you can go to johnhenny.com. Uh, all the, uh, the back episodes of the podcast are there. You can also subscribe on iTunes and Audible. No, not Audible. That's where my book is. No, um, Spotify. Uh, and uh, please, please, if you really like the podcast, Please share it. Spread the word. I'm, I'm very happy with the way listenership has been growing, and I've been hearing from a number of you. If you're interested in lessons, get on my email list. Um, you can always find out about upcoming courses I have and different things I'm doing, and I also share uh, different thoughts and ramblings about singing, etc. And until next time, to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.